Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner and with me today is Corinne Troutman. And Corinne is the Director of Operations at the Peel Compton Foundation. And she's also a member of the Bentonville Garden Club. And this month we're going to be talking to Corinne about what's going on at, um, at Compton and Peel, their upcoming events, and the um, other things going on in um, gardening this month, uh, plant sales and so forth. So. Um, things really start to pick up in April, don't they? They With, do. Yeah, this is the busy month now. Uh -huh. We start, so uh, we start planting um, things. But it's we've had such a cold, cold winter, and it's it's a late spring. Everything seems to be about two weeks later. Is that what you're seeing? About two to two three. Weeks. Yeah. As that's what I'm seeing with uh, a lot of the plants and, and things coming back. So it's going to be a late spring, and we're going to maybe delay some some things we need to do in our garden in April, but we'll go over some of those things later. But we really want to talk about the upcoming events at Compton Peel. You've got so many things going on there. And then the plant sales, that are, of course, are really important to everyone. Oh, so. yes. So what's going on at Peel lately other than the plant sale? Well, Jerry, thank you so much for having me and I'm excited to be here. And um, we have so many things going on at the foundation. And um, we have actually an event coming up um, on the 12th of April and mm -hmm. it's our it's our spring wreath workshop oh. where people can sign up, come to the Peel Mansion and make a spring wreath and put on their front door just oh. in time for Easter. And that'll awesome. kick off our event programs That's for great. this year. That's great. That sounds like a lot of fun. And it, then over at Compton Gardens, we started having our free spring tours that happen every Friday at 10 o'clock. You can show up, take a tour through the garden with a trained master gardener and get to see all the spring wildflowers oh, coming into bloom. that'll be wonderful because they change every few weeks, right? They do and so I encourage you to come multiple times mm -hmm. to come through because each time you come through the garden it's going to be something different that's in bloom during right. the spring. Now Compton Gardens is in Bentonville. Correct. Right off the square. And Peel Garden is right in front of Walmart in Bentonville. You can't hardly miss it. You, can't, you pass it before you go to Walmart, so it's very easy to find. So those are two great gardens. Mm -hmm. And your sale is going to be on um, May, which day? May? May, May 10th. May 10th. Well, we're having so many sales in April also. Um, the the uh, Nature's Calling and the Bella Vista Garden Club will have some sales on Saturday, April 19th and the 26th. And then the big sale uh, for uh, the wastewater and Bella Vista Garden Club is on um, the first Saturday of May. It's always the first Saturday of May, and that's May 3rd. So um, these sales run from 8 to 1 at the wastewater plant. That's right up um, the highway. Um, it's if you just pass that big sign that says Bella Vista Village with all the plantings around it, that's the next right after that sign. So we have some wonderful plants at, the, at these sales and, and uh, it's a great fundraiser for us too. So. And then the, Bel the Mettonville Garden Club is having their sale on uh, May 3rd also, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we are and it'll be on Main Street across from the library in Bentonville. Each of the members bring in about five plants to contribute to the sale. So these plants came out of local gardens mm -hmm. and like the conditions that we have around here to grow in. That's the best way to buy plants is, you know, right out of the gardens and, and you know they grow here and they'll live here and they'll mm -hmm. start five here and so forth. So, but the Bentonville Club isn't, um, a, it's not a big sale for them. I mean, it's just five plants per person. Right. It's not a huge sale yeah. for us, but yeah. the funding does go towards our scholarship oh, that's endowment. Great. Yeah. So uh, our, uh, the Bella Vista Garden Club sale is the biggest um, uh, fundraiser we have, and we sometimes have between fifteen to eighteen hundred plants. So we have a lot of um, plants available and, and a good variety. And we also, on our website, will list the, the type of plants that are available. And I think you do that for Compton also, we don't do you? We do that for our native tree and plant sale at Compton Gardens. And that's going to be um, May 10th. May 10th on Saturday. And on what time Saturday, is that? We start at 8 a.m. and we go all the way until 1 o'clock. Okay. Uh, and we have a wide variety of native plants that we cultivated 
on site and then some of the more difficult ones to cultivate we brought in. But we actually kick off our whole weekend for National Public Garden Days on May 9th. And this year we're going to have an exciting speaker come and give a talk. If anybody has ever heard Dr. Al Einert speak before, oh, he's yes. a professor emeritus from the University of Arkansas. His talk will be over folklore of native trees and plants. So if you've mm. ever been curious as to why something is named a way that it is named, uh -huh. he's going to have some really wonderful stories to tell us about the folklore of native plants. Oh, he's just so knowledgeable. He's just been a wonderful professor there and I've learned an awful lot from him over the years. He's really wonderful. And then what else is happening that night? Or? Um, that day that is day. Uh, Dr. Al Einert's talk, and then we have w our preview plant sale happening right after that, and that's where we thank our volunteers and our donors that they get first choice of the plant material and get to purchase ahead of the public plant sale, which is okay. the following Saturday. Because you really do depend on the master gardeners. We do. To, uh, uh, it. do all this work. <laughs> it's just, it's hard for a couple people at Peel and Compton to do this. It, it, so. it is very hard and we're very fortunate to have a wonderful group of master gardeners that help us. And then it's such a good um, learning um, con condition, you know, for the master gardeners. You learn so much when you work with these native plants and and uh, it's just, it's a two-way street. I mean, you, you benefit and the master gardeners benefit tremendously by learning all these uh, these plants and, and how they grow and, mm -hmm. and how to transplant them and how to you know propagate them and so forth. So it's a wonderful experience. So. And the um, the other um, the other plant sales. I think uh, Rogers is ha Rogers Garden Club is mm -hmm. having their plant sale. I think the third or fourth Saturday of uh, April. I think there'll be things in the paper. Now the Bella Vista Garden Club has a flyer they're putting out uh, in various places. And that's going to be um, about the plant sale on, um, on May 3rd. So that's, um, um, just look for that, you know, in the uh, various, you know, locations around Bella Vista. They'll have a plant sale flyer, so get information about it. And it does tell them that the plant, um, plants available will be on the, the list of the plants available will be on the website. Because there's such a variety of plants that will grow in this area. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not too far south where we can't grow, you know, the hollies and the things like that. We're not too far north where we, you know, can't grow some of the more tender ones. So. We have a wonderful biodiversity of plant material that we can grow and produce here mm -hmm. in this area. And especially with the native plants, um, there's just a wide, wide range of native plants that love growing in these conditions that are easy to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we focus our plant sale on. And on our website, we have it listed what plants prefer the shade, what plants prefer the sun. And so we make it that's really great. easy that you can make your shopping list before mm -hmm. coming to the sale on May 10th. Well, the problem with um, some of the plant sales, you know, at the box stores and nurseries, um, they'll, they'll get in plants that really don't do well here. Mm -hmm. You know, they're in the wrong zone. And where they have a hosta that'll be listed, um, you know, part sun or sun to part shade, when they're talking about that sun, they're talking about Minnesota sun. Right. They're not talking about Arkansas sun. So you have to really watch, um, you know, the, the uh, nurseries and the box stores when they have information about what will grow here. Now, if we pull these plants out of our gardens, you know they're going to grow here. Mm -hmm. You know, they've, they've been tested and, and they're, you know. And that's what's so nice proven. about local plant sales is that it allows you an opportunity to go and talk to gardeners who have been gardening in this area mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. I know at our sale, we have not only the master gardeners there, but we have our garden staff that's present as mm -hmm. well that it's just a wealth of information for you to be able to ask, especially if you're getting started or if you're mm -hmm. having problems or issues, we're happy mm -hmm. to help out. Yeah, we have a Master Gardener table available too at the, at the uh, Bella Vista Garden Club plant sale. Mm -hmm. There's always Master Gardeners there uh, to answer questions. And I think we have 26 Master Gardeners in the uh, Bella Vista Club now, so we're, we're getting a lot of uh, Master Gardeners in our club. and. Um, 
they, you know, every master gardener has his own or his her own, um, ex, you know, type of um, expertise, mm -hmm. and you can't know everything about everything. That's right. It's impossible. So there's some that just um, uh, concentrate on roses, some concentrate on native plants, some concentrate on, um, you know, perennials, or you know, they just have their own interest and then they are very knowledgeable about that specific mm -hmm. area and but in Peel and Compton your, your people have to kind of know everything we we do um, because actually we have the best of the horticulture world that we have the native plants that we take care of over at Compton Gardens and then at the Peel Mansion we have a formal Victorian garden so we have a lot of non-native plant material that people are familiar with that mm -hmm. they're either have seen in their grandmother's yard growing up or they've seen in large botanical gardens when they can come right to Bentonville and see those same specimens and ask us about what we've had success with and what we've had trouble with and we're, we're very open to people coming and visiting us and taking a tour of the mansion seeing our newly renovated museum store that we have yeah. on site so I would highly encourage, if you've got any questions, we're here as a resource to the community as well. Yeah, you've just added so much to the community. With, and then going, your trails going into Crystal Bridges, mm -hmm. and their trails are just fantastic, too. That's just a whole other world with their wonderful trails with native plants. And, and um, the Master Gardeners also are trail guides for, uh, for the you know, Crystal Bridges trails, too. Mm -hmm. so. It's so nice that they're just working hand in hand with uh, that community there. It's mm -hmm. just, it's a real jewel to have. We are very fortunate to be the pedestrian entryway for Crystal Bridges. Yeah. So we see people coming to visit their gardens who take a minute and stop and learn about Dr. Neil Compton and his efforts to save the Buffalo River and then enjoy the native plant material before mm -hmm. they go on into the museum to see the native artwork. Mm -hmm. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful area mm -hmm. that we live in. We're just very blessed. Um, the other thing, the okay, the Benton County Master Gardeners are hosting a um, gardening expo for the first time this year. It's a gardening um, expo. It's going to be held May 3rd. Everything's happening on May 3rd at the Extension Office um, at 1204 Southwest 14th Street. And they're going to have um, um, a small plant sale there from the um, the master gardeners are digging out of their gardens for the plant sale. But they're also having seminars and they're having vendors. They have a seminar, um, it starts at 7 to 1, but at 9 o'clock they're going to have a seminar on lawns and that's going to be presented by Neil Mays. He's the new horticulture agent at, um, at the Extension Office. Then at um, 9.45 you're going to be doing native plants there. I am. I'm going to be talking about how to incorporate native plants into your garden. Um, I'll show some slides on what they look like. I'll talk oh, about right. how to go ahead and incorporate them into the plant material that you already have mm -hmm. existing in your garden. Because if you want to add native plants, you don't necessarily have to go and dig everything out of your garden right. and start over. There's some nice ones that will complement, say, your hostas or your mm -hmm. roses or right. some of the zinnias that you grow. So because we're emphasizing native plants doesn't mean that you can't grow anything in your garden that comes from another country. I mean, we're not going to get rid of the hostas and, and the other imported plants, but to, to incorporate more native plants you know, with your plants is, is really the general idea to do that. It is. So, and then on, um, let's see, at 10.30, they're gonna have a food preservation um, um, seminar with Susan Pickle and she's from the Extension Office, I understand. And 11.15 we're going to have butterfly gardening with Lou Jasper. Now Ju Lou Jasper is our butterfly expert and she just, you know, loves to rescue these little uh, chrysalis and, and, you know, she teaches about butterflies at the schools and she's just a wonderful butterfly person. So that'll be a wonderful uh, seminar. And then um, they're also having vendors there. They're having rain barrels by one of the master gardeners and um, garden decor. They have tool sharpening. Uh, Wild Birds Unlimited is going to mm -hmm. be there. And she's the owner of, uh, owners of, of Wild Birds Unlimited. They're also master gardeners. That's right. And it's like we've got our feet in everything <laughs> around the gardening uh, area here. 
And then uh, Nitron is in, is in Johnson, and they do a lot of um, organic um, products for gardening, and they're going to be there. And then the 4-H Club is going to have a, um, a booth there, too. And then um, also Dawn Denton is a master gardener, and mm -hmm. she has written um, a series of gardening books for children. Mm -hmm. And I don't, have you seen her gardening books? Oh, they're phenomenal. They are so I'm cute. They're just wonderful little Each books one of my nephew and nieces have a set of her books, and they're <laughs> just... <laughs> I wonderful I set too. You know, you got to get yeah. children involved in the garden very early. Oh yeah. What a great way to start. With yeah, one's books. about ladybugs and one's about um, frogs and I mean they're just they're mm -hmm. just wonderful books for children about gardening. So that's going to be at the at the expo. And so there's just so much going on in April and then in your garden there's just a lot going on too. But if you need um, oh the Master Gardener hotline is starting up. And that's starting up in April now. So that will be um, a way to get your gardening questions answered mm -hmm. by a Master Gardener. And if you just call 271-1060, um, the Extension Office, their hours are Monday, Wednesday, Friday from um, 9 to 12 and 1 to 4. And you can get in touch with the Master Gardener. Mm -hmm. And they will you know, answer your questions. If they don't know the exact answer when you call, they will look it up and do research and get back with you. Usually they'll call me or email me, and I'll right. get the answer back to them <laughs> as soon we as we can. We have a wonderful research um, library there at the um, mm -hmm. uh, reference library at the Extension Office. And so there's just a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can count on. And their website also contains a lot of good gardening information. It's um, www.bentoncountygardening.org. So that's pretty easy to remember. So um, there's just so much information out there that you can get. And then the Bella Vista Garden Club has a good website with information too. Mm -hmm. So, But the things we need to do in your garden in April, it's, um, it's such a busy month. It seems like you know, we were resting for these last few months and just kind of looking out the window at the birds and, you know, mm -hmm. all of a sudden now we're just digging in with both feet, you know, trying to get the gardens uh, up and running. And the hummingbirds will be arriving sometime between the 1st of April. I have them in my garden between the 1st and the 10th of April, usually. Mm -hmm. Now with this colder weather, they may be a little later. I don't have my feeders out yet, but on the first week of April I get those out. And that is um, just sugar water. It's a ratio of four, four cups of water to one cup of sugar, or four to one ratio. And you don't want any stronger than that because mm -mm. it does affect their kidneys, I think, if there's too much sugar. So uh, four to one ratio, you don't need to add red food coloring to it. You want it as natural as you can. And usually the feeders are red. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of red feeders, and that attracts them. So you got to get those out in April and, and uh, start feeding the hummingbirds. And then the, the big chore is cleanup. Oh, yes. The big chore is cleanup. And um, as you said, we're a couple of weeks behind because we've mm -hmm. had a late winter. And so cleanup is very vital and important. You need to rake out all of the leaves out of your garden beds. You need to start pulling the winter weeds. Mm -hmm. If you put down a pre-emergent for summer weeds, you need to go ahead and put the pre-emergent down and kind of fluff your mulcher, put more mulch mm -hmm. out. Add mulch. Yeah. And I think there's, um, I've, been, I've switched to the mulch from the, uh, the compost uh, facility at Benton County, at Bentonville. Mm -hmm. and instead of buying the bag mulch, I've just switched to that you know, compost mulch, and my plants are loving it. So that's another option is to is to go with uh, compost mulch. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the leaves you have to get the leaves out because if you have that blanket of leaves and it rains, it's just going to keep the water from going into it the is. ground. It'll just run off. So mm -hmm. you got to get those leaves. Well, go ahead out. and pull the leaves and put them into your compost pile mm -hmm. for next year, and right. then you'll be putting that nutrients back in the soil. Right. And I've already taken just um, round um, chicken wire. Um, circles. I know you've done this at Compton. Yes. You take a, mm -hmm. just a chicken wire circle, you put your leaves in, you just leave them there for a year or two, and within about a year, year and a half, mm -hmm. at the bottom you have this wonderful leaf mulch. It's mm -hmm. just a great leaf mulch. There's no point with. in breaking your back if Mother Nature is going to do that work for, for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Make it easy. Okay. So, and perennials, this is the month for dividing perennials. It is really the month for dividing perennials, yeah. and um, 
you want to get some of the perennials before they start to bloom. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and divide them out and you'll be amazed how beautiful your perennials look after you divide them and mm -hmm. you allow them a little bit of space. It's like wearing shoes that are too small, mm -hmm. if you think of it that way. With the plants, they have the root system and the shoes are too small, so you need to divide them up and spread them out. And, give them and it's room. also another wonderful time to have those pass along plants that oh, yeah. you Share give to your neighbor or you donate to a plant sale. Yeah, the main thing is if you if you divide your plants, don't throw them away. Right. <laughs> don't, don't throw them in the trash. But please, you know, pass them on to people or let other people mm -hmm. enjoy them. So that's that's how we, at the Garden Club and the Master Gardeners, you know, mm -hmm. share our plants too. So, um, and then annuals. Um, I've seen tomato plants at the box stores already in March, and. That's not good. It, well, uh, if you're if you're just extremely optimistic, you can go ahead and purchase those tomatoes. You just need to be aware that our frost-free date here in Northwest Arkansas is April 15th. So we have before gotten hard freezes all mm -hmm. the way up at April 15th. So and if, after and after last year, our plant sale was canceled in for Saturday May because we had three inches of snow. Yeah, which was you know quite unusual. I've never seen that happen, but it it can happen. And so on you these, put your tomatoes plants out and they absolutely. freeze. Absolutely, on these sunny days, I know that you just want to get out there and mm -hmm. you want to do something and you want to work in your yard. Yeah. But planting annuals is really a little too early, yeah. and you don't want to have to go back and do double work. So right. instead, focus your efforts on dividing your perennials and cleaning your beds and getting them ready to put those annuals yeah, in. Planting perennials is not going to hurt in, you know, mm -hmm. this month, but annuals you have to wait on. And then the bulbs, uh, the, uh, the daffodils are wonderful this year. Oh, they're aren't just they? beautiful. I think they've loved this cold weather we mm -hmm. had. And they're just wonderful. And, I know uh, at the Peel Mansion our tulips have started coming up uh -huh. and that always is just such a welcome sight after oh, yeah. a long winter. Mm -hmm. Now, do you replant your tulips every year? Or do they come back? No, we replant our tulips every year. You have to treat um, them like an annual. We have to treat them like an annual. Some of some tulips will come back, but you just won't have the beautiful large show mm -hmm. blooms on them. So, in order to get that at the mansion yeah. for all of our visitors coming, we like to ensure that we have that. So we plant them every year. Yeah, and you almost have to treat them as an annual here in in, mm -hmm. in Bella Vista. Okay, and then house plants. Um, oh, the, the other thing to remember on your daffodils and your bulbs is don't cut off the greenery. Just mm -hmm. let it die back to, to go, you know, brown because that's how the bulb feeds itself for next year. If you cut that off, you're not going to have any blooms next year. Correct. The, the photosynthesis of those leaves just feeds into that bulb and it, and it nourishes that bulb for next year. So, and then the flower will be in that bulb. I know, and it's, it's always tempting to go in and cut those leaves mm -hmm. as soon as they start looking bad. Mm -hmm. um, but there's other options to just have a fresh look to it. You can go in, and I've seen people braid yeah. the leaves and put rubber bands around them, and they're still getting some, some of that photosynthesis. Some, yeah, but, it's but if you can, if you can hold off just and let just them let them be, <laughs> then yeah. um, they'll take care of themselves, yeah. and you'll have a wonderful display for next year. Yeah. And then the house plants. I mean, the tropicals. You use a lot oh. of tropicals at the gardens, right? We we do. And fortunately, we've got a small greenhouse where we can overwinter those tropical plants. And I know for most homeowners, they don't have that luxury of a mm -hmm. greenhouse, so they pull them in into their home and they enjoy them. And I'm sure that they're much like me that. I'm ready for these plants to get out of my house <laughs> right. and for me to have my space back. Get your back. garage back. That's yes. right. But really, you want to wait until May again because mm -hmm. that frost can happen early oh, yeah. or late. And if you put your house plants out, they'll get nipped mm -hmm. by the frost and then yeah. you're going to have to start completely over. You almost have to wait till it's like 50 degrees <clears throat> at night right. on the average. I mean, if it dips below 50, they're not going to be happy, right? You know, so you might as well wait till they're happy out there. And then, as far as the lawns go, um, this is the time for your pre-emergence, and you um, you need to fertilize your zoysia about uh, two weeks after it starts greening up. Right. And then this is a good time for your zoysia and Bermuda is to really cut it low, and remove all the dead old growth. And um, we just had. Uh, a master gardener meeting and they talked about lawns and, and doing that low mowing for the uh, the zoysia and the Bermuda to get rid of the dead uh, grass mm -hmm. that from left from last year so 
and then roses. You, you do have roses too. We and have roses. We um, have a rose garden where we have heirloom varieties mm -hmm. that are on show at the Peel Mansion. Mm -hmm. And hopefully everybody has already pruned their roses back because the ideal time to prune roses is actually around Valentine's Day. So you can remember mm -hmm. that when you give roses is when you're supposed to prune your roses right. in your garden. Then the other rule I've heard too is when the forsythias bloom is to trim your roses. Yes. And the forsythias are just starting the first week of April or mm -hmm. for the last week of um, uh, March. So it is a little later this year. It is a little and, later. Um, and you'll notice that as you're out there tangled in your roses pruning mm -hmm. them back that the leaves have started to kind of mm -hmm. come out. I know at the Peel Mansion they have for us. Right. And it's now time to give those roses the nutrients that they need. So you fertilize them and go ahead right. and water them first, fertilize them, and then water it again to make mm -hmm. sure that that fertilizer gets into the soil where those roots right. really can take and it you up. You don't want to put fertilizer on a dry rose or no, okay, just no. burn the, 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 uh, the roots. So mm -hmm. you have to water them first and then fertilize. So, so for more information on, um, the, um, on gardening, you can go to the Bella Vista Garden Club website. It's uh, bellavistagardenclub.com. It's very easy. And... Um, your website, I know, has some information too. Absolutely. Yeah. You can find all of our list of programs throughout the year at peelcompton.org. Mm -hmm. You can also find the information about the plant sale and what we have mm -hmm. and information about some of the plants that we have in both of our gardens. And your tours and so forth. And our tours. But it's just a, a great uh, um, tri trip to go through the Compton Gardens. And no matter what you, time of year it is, it's wonderful. And then you have champion trees there also. We do and we've got two of the state champion trees there and in fact Jerry this year we've got a wonderful opportunity that we are going to have the state champion tree art exhibit at Compton Gardens oh, really? starting in June through August and it's Linda Palmer Williams art exhibit where she traveled the state of Arkansas and sketched the state champion oh, trees. Oh I think I saw something like that on the AATN yes. channel about that. So that'll be wonderful. Okay. And uh, the next Bella Vista Garden Club meeting will be held on April 23rd. It's the fourth Wednesday of the month. And we will meet at 11 at the United um, Lutheran Church on Cooper Road in Forest Hills. And the program this month is Introduction to Hobbs State Park Conservation Area. And uh, Hobbs State Park is another wonderful, you know, um, area to, to visit in this area. So we're just very blessed. So I want to thank you, Corinne, for coming today. I just enjoyed visiting with you and hearing about all that's going on at Peel and Compton. And, and uh, I just thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I'm happy to share the information that I have and the knowledge that I've gained. That's, that's what we're here for. So I hope you've enjoyed the program. And until next month, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. <laughs>